All right, guys, welcome back to Mr. Pose Frame. This is the Solo Barno build. I am building the cedar. That's one of our plans at back40buildings.com. If you guys are looking for uh, design on your own barnuminium, we do custom. We have stock plans. Check that out. We can help you out. Also, if you want to self build, which this, build, this uh, series is all about, check out our patron group. It's a self-build, self-GC group where you get to ask me questions. It's a great community of, of other self-builders. Uh, we do lives every month. Check that out. I think you guys will really like it. This video is going to be about squaring your building, applying OSB or roof sheathing if you're going to do that, and synthetic uh, roof covering. So let's just go ahead and jump into the show. But I just wanted to mention how important squaring your building is. It's going to be your instinct once you get to this point. You're going to be excited. You're going to want to just get going on either putting your sheathing on or your metal. But you will pay the price if you do not square your roof first. So let's go ahead and jump on the show and check it out. So we have all of our fascia on and we are ready to go. So before we can start our sheathing, we need to make sure that we're plumb on all four corners and then we need to straighten our fascia. So step one is to check the four corners. If you built your walls properly, this and this should be both be able to be perfectly plumb. Same with this and this, they should be perfectly plumb. So I'm gonna use the plate level. I'm pretty sure I got them pretty close to the chains. I'll fine tune the four corners. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down the wall with my plate level, plumbing up each of these with the straps. And that should get me pretty close. Then I'll put a string line up here and fine tune it. All right guys, so we plumbed the four corners. Now I put my string line up. You can see I'm getting this string line. It already looks so much better. And so what I'm doing is I'm coming up here. I'm looking at the string line. We look good. So you can see here, that's close enough I'd leave it, but if I needed to pull it this way, I would just tighten this strap. But what I would do first is go over there, let one click off and see if that fixed it. Um, so we're pretty good. Um, it looks like that one needs to come this way just a hair, and that third one needs to go that way just a hair. All right, so you can see how much better that looks. It's nice, straight, all the way down. And then this side, so as long as the building was built properly, should be nice and straight as well, which it is. So now what we need to do is make sure the peak, I know the peak needs to go that way because I can see like just standing here. You now you can't see it on here, but you can see that the, up there at the top, those two tops, those columns are this way ever so slightly. Um, so what I'm gonna do is wrap chains around there, take them diagonally down some posts and get that straightened out. All 
right, so everything's squared, straightened. Um, what I did is I measured from a screw up there down to the fascia, and then I go all the way to the opposite corner of the building, in this case it's 64 feet, to make sure my diagonal's good. And I had, uh, I'm within one eighth of an inch, so I'm happy with that. So, something unique about this building is we're going to be spray foaming the roof in, so at these end bays, I need to block in, so when the spray foam comes up, it's, it uh, will adhere to the inside of this and not have this gap here. So we're going to block in there, and then I can start running my sheeting. So we're just going to talk about the fasteners we um, use in today's video. Um, as far as the half inch rope sheeting, I use two and five sixteenths ring shank nails. Um, I love using ring shanks because the pull out uh, power is, is just so much better than smooth shank. And I put these on about a six to eight inch nailing pattern. So there's going to be seven to eight inch or seven to eight nails across each purlin. And then on the edges, I drop that down and I have usually about nine nails on the edges. So just keep that in mind. Uh, these work really well. I use a nice uh, cordless um, pass load that works really well. Um, we've got some questions about why we put our plywood vertical on our roofs versus horizontal. In typical stick frame construction, your trusses are two foot on center, so you run your plywood horizontally because you're, you're connecting to more trusses across that way. In post frame construction where you have purlins, that two foot on center is going up the uh, roof pitch, so you want to turn your plywood so it's running vertical so you're um, attaching to more of those purlins all at once. So as all of you guys know, I self-built my own barn dominium. Most of what I do is by myself. So I've come up with ways to help me be more successful, more efficient. And one of those is when I'm applying the OSB to the roof, I make sure I don't put on my fascia trim. And I screw a uh, two by six to the fascia board so it sticks up and I can just put my OSB on there and it can slide down and it will stop exactly where it needs to be. So that's a um, an important thing if you're going to be doing this by yourself. Even if you have a couple people, it's really nice to have that board on there because you can throw that sheet up there. You don't have to worry about it sliding off. You don't have to worry about lining it up perfectly. It, autom it pretty much automatically does that. So uh, just keep in mind if you're going to do this by yourself, that little trick. We use synthetic paper on most of the builds that's rated for uh, steel. Uh, we use 5 16 staples. The stapler, I use a hand stapler. They do make air staplers. The best one I found is this used to be uh, DuoFast, but pass load bought out DuoFast. This right here um, is the best one I found. It's the HT550. It is a little bit more difficult uh, to load but clearing jams and all that is amazing. And loading isn't all that bad once you get used to it. It almost sets the staples perfectly flush every single time, that's why I like it. A couple other things we can talk um, about is some jurisdictions will require H clips, and those are little clips that go between your plywood sheets that hold them together. Um, whenever you're doing a steel roof, you don't want to use those because they will show through the steel. When you lay your steel down, and you screw it down, you will be able to see where those clips are. Same thing with the staples. Even that little staple, if you're not getting them flush with the plywood, there's the potential that they will show through your steel, so just keep that in mind. All right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap on today's show. Hopefully you guys picked something up that can help you be more successful. Um, make sure you come back. I believe the next video is going to be putting on the roof metal, and I'm putting this metal on without a telehandler. So you're gonna see how I was creative in using my skid steer and my lift in order to get the 
sheets of steel on the roof. I get lots of questions about this, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, as always, we appreciate you watching. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, share it with your friends, and we will catch you on the next video.